Welcome folks. We are going to have a very short presentation uh, for lab number five uh, within the electric circuit laboratory course that we teach here at Washington State University. In lab five, we are interested in modeling dependent sources in DC circuits. So here is the lab objectives. The first one is the students will be able to analyze DC circuits with dependent sources. That's one of the objectives or outcomes of the lab. The students will be able to model bipolar junction transistors, we call them BJTs, with dependent current source. Then the students will learn how to connect basic bipolar junction transistors on uh, the breadboard and also will be able to test and validate its DC operation. Finally, students will be able to simulate DC circuits with dependent sources using ORCAD BSPICE. So if we say that what's a dependent source is, dependent sources are sources where their values depend on or controlled by another voltage or another current in the circuit. So there is four different types of dependent sources. Uh, all dependent sources will have diamond shape. So if you have a diamond shape like this, you know it's a dependent source. If you see an, an arrow inside this dependent source, that means it's a current source. So in this particular example, we have this current source depend on Vx. This current source will equal to 3 times Vx where Vx is a voltage, another voltage, in the circuit. So this kind of circuit is called voltage-controlled current source, CS, current source. So VCCS, voltage-controlled current source. It's a current source that is controlled by the voltage. This is another dependent source we have here. And in this dependent source, the value of it will equal to, for example, 20 times Ix where Ix is another current in the circuit. So this current source depend on Ix. If Ix, for example, is 1 amp, the value of this current, the value of this current going to be 20 amps. If Ix equals 2 amps, the value of this current going to be 20 times 2, which is 40 amps. So this current source depends on Ix. So, this is called current-controlled current source. This current source, this CS, is controlled by the current. Current-controlled current source, CCCS. Another one would be a voltage source. So if you see a diamond shape with a polarity within it, that means it's a voltage source. And this voltage source, for example, uh, depend on the voltage Vx. So we call it voltage-controlled voltage source. It's a voltage source, Vs, that is controlled by the voltage, Vc, Vs. Another one would be uh, this voltage source controlled by another current. So uh, in this example here, we say that this voltage will equal to 10 times Iy. So this voltage source controlled by the current Iy. So it is called current controlled voltage source. Now those dependent sources, and uh, they are models, they aren't actual circuits, they are models. For example, they can be sensors, so you can say that if it's a temperature sensor, this temperature sensor is modeled to be controlled, this current source is controlled by the temperature, where the temperature here is Vx, for example. Or it can be modeled as amplifier, this current source is scalar multiplication of Vx. Uh, so those sources are used to model sensors and to model amplifiers. So if we look into the bipolar junction transistor as a device, it is modeled as a current control device. It's modeled as a current control device. So the symbol for the BJT transistor as follows. And this here is what we call NPN uh, bipolar junction transistor. So you can see that the arrow is leaving the transistor here. And then the top uh, terminal is called collector. It has the symbol C. 
the middle terminal uh, uh, is called base and has the symbol B and the bottom terminal is called emitter and has the symbol E. Now there is current going to the base as shown here. This is the base current. We call it IB. There is a current going into the collector of the transistor. We call it IC. And there is a current leaving the emitter. It's called IE. So this device is basically in electronic uh, devices. It look like this. This is the shape of the electronic device. And you can see that if you look into the transistor, it has this flat surface and the other side will be a curvy surface. So if it faces the flat surface, uh, the first uh, terminal on the left is the emitter, which is the bottom one. The one in the middle is the base. And then the one on the right will be the collector. So if you make the transistor facing the flat surface, if you face the flat surface, from the left to the right will be E, B, C, emitter base collector. You need to know that when you hook up the circuit on the breadboard. But this transistor is actually modeled as uh, this electric uh, circuit because this here is an element that we can analyze. But this one we don't. This one is just abstract symbol. This device is very abstract device. But this here has the electric elements that constitutes it. Uh, so uh, if you look into the base, this is the base, which is this leg. And this is the emitter, which is the bottom leg. So from the base to the emitter, there will be a 0 0.7 volts voltage drop. If the transistor is on and conducting current, the voltage at the base will be higher than the voltage at the emitter by 0 0.7. And there is a current source, a dependent current source, coming into the collector. So, for example, if we say that this is the base current IB, then the collector current is going to be beta IB. So the collector current here is a current controlled current source. It's a current source that has error, but it is controlled on the base current. Beta is constant. It changes from one device to another one. And then we're going to have IE going through here. Clearly, that IC, which is beta IB, plus IB, will equal to IC. This is by applying KCL at this node over here. And also, the voltage at the base is higher than the voltage at the emitter by 0 0.7. So, we're going to test the circuit in this lab. So the way we're going to build the circuit on the breadboard is like that. So here is the transistor. So from the base, we're going to connect a 47 kilo ohm resistor. We call it RB. And then from the resistor, we're going to apply a 5 volts. So we have a 5 volts connected to RB, connected to the base. At the emitter, we're going to have 2.2 kilo ohm connected to ground and from the collector we're going to have a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor connected to a 10 volts this is the transistor that we look at this transistor is called the Q2N3904 or sometimes we call it 2N3904 and this is a generic uh, NPN a bipolar junction transistor and you can purchase it very easily it costs about 10 cents a piece, more or less. Uh, sometimes they sell it a little bit higher based on the quantity, how many transistors you're going to buy. But uh, this is a very simple and basic transistor that we use. And everything applied to the circuit here is DC. So we are interested in the DC analysis of the circuit. So keep in mind that this transistor is the same as that, right? So you build in this, you put in this symbol back in here, right? It's the same as that. Now, if I told you that you need to analyze the circuit, you can't really analyze it. How would you analyze the circuit? Because this symbol is abstract. So you need to find an, an equivalent circuit, a model, and an equivalent circuit that replaces the transistor. So, and that's what we're going to do. 
we're going to replace the transistor with its equivalent circuit. So if you look at this transistor here, will be replaced by its equivalent circuit. You're going to have IB here. This current source, which is the collector, IC, will act as a current controlled current source and it will equal to 160 IB and then the voltage at the base is higher than the voltage at the emitter by 0 0.7 and this is IE so now the circuit can be easily analyzed by replacing the transistor with its equivalent model and the equivalent model here has a dependent current source current control dependent current source and now you know why the dependent sources are so important for us when we study electric uh, circuit theory in the basic electric circuit course in electrical engineering this dependent source is a model for abstract devices like transistors or sensors and transducers now we're going to analyze the circuit here to see how we can solve for the circuit so the first thing i will see is that i see this collector current will equal to 160 times ib right because i c which is this current is the same as this dependent current source which equals to 160 ib and then if i sum kcl at this node i'll say the currents going in which is i c plus i b will equal to i e so i can say that i e will equal to i c plus i b this is by kcl at this node and then i know that i c will equal to 160 i b from this equation which is the same as this dependent source so now i e will equal to 161 times IB so in this device which is common in uh, bipolar junction transistors is that IC is a function of IB and IE is a function of IB now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to this loop over here and we're gonna sum the voltages around this loop so by KVL around this mesh we can say that minus 5 which is this voltage plus IB times 47K so we have plus 47K times IB over here we're gonna say that plus 0 0.7 which what we have here and then we're gonna say plus 2.2K times IE IE times 2.2K equals 0 so this here is the loop equation for mesh number 1 and now I'm gonna substitute for IE to be 161 i b and i'm going to take the minus 5 plus the 0 0.7 to the other side so i will have 47 k i b plus 2.2 k times 161 i b replaced i e with 161 i b will equal to take the minus 5 to the other side will be plus 5 and the plus 0 0.7 to the other side will be negative 0 0.7 so this will give me 4.3 clearly this is one equation one unknown so I can combine the IB terms so this will be 401.2 K times IB will equal to 4.3 I can solve for IB it will equal to 10.07 microamp then I can solve for IE which is 161 times IB uh, that will equal to 1.7255 milliamps and finally IC will be 160 times IB which is 1.7148 milliamp so in this lab you're gonna build this circuit and you're gonna take the measurements for IB, IE and IC and VB, VE and VC and it should match those calculated values that we have and that basically will be the lab uh, for lab number five and the power of lab number five is that we were able to use the dependent current source to model the bipolar junction transistors and that's why we like dependent sources in basic circuit theory courses it's actually a very powerful modeling technique used to model advanced 
electronic devices and circuits so i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much and good luck to you